As we look back on this tumultuous year, we are truly grateful for His grace that has been with us in every situation. While we have no idea what 2021 has in store for us, we know how we will start the year with a week of prayer, fasting, and consecration. I'm pleased to announce that our 2021 theme is Awesome God. Starting with our week of prayer and consecration and continuing through the whole year, we want to focus on the greatness and the goodness of God. I want you to join us January 11 through 15, 2021, as we consecrate ourselves and seek God and know more about our awesome God. Happy New Year, Victory Dubai. Welcome to the first day of 2021, the first day of a new decade. Welcome to our online Friday worship service. And we are just so thankful that you are joining us wherever you may be. Thank you for being part of this. We still have a lot of limitations. That's why we cannot do our in-person gathering, but we are maximizing whatever options that we have, and that is online. We really hope that you are connected with all of us. Listen, if not, I want to ask you to do this. Please subscribe to our Victory Device YouTube channel. And once you are there, make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you will be informed of new videos that we are uploading. If you are visiting our Victory Device Facebook page, make sure that you click on the link, okay, so that it will bring you to our YouTube channel, share that, okay, to your friends, office mates, colleagues, families, whether here in the UAE or elsewhere, because that's our heart's desire, that they will have the opportunity to know God, to hear from the Word of God, to worship together with us, because we know that God will make a difference, just as He did in 2020, He will do the same thing in 2021. Now, to start off with this, okay, I'd like to read from Isaiah chapter 40, and I believe this is something that will, you know, that will encourage each one of us, strengthen each one of us as we step into an unknown territory, 2021. Isaiah chapter 40, beginning with verse 28. This is what Isaiah, who was in the same situation, a lot of things were happening, but he knew that God was saying something and God wanted him to encourage God's people. He said this, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. Look at what Isaiah said. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. See, even youth shall faint and be weary. A young man shall fall exhausted, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. That's what we need for 2021. They shall be renewed in their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Victory Dubai and everyone else who's watching us, tuning in, listen, God is able to strengthen you even though 2020 was quite challenging but as we step into the new year we have this promise god is able to encourage strengthen the weak be with us he promised even from last month's preaching god is with us and he will never leave us nor forsake us allow me to pray as we commit this time of worship before the lord father thank you so much for the opportunity that we can commit to you 2021 we believe lord you were with us you stood with us you stood by us you never abandoned us you were there all along in 2020 our hope and our assurance is this as we step into the 2021 as we step into this new year we know you will also be with us Thank you for that assurance. And thank you that we could give the glory and the praise to you. You deserve it, Lord. So as we sing our worship to you, would you accept them, God? May the glory and the honor that is due your holy name be unto you forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's worship together, guys. Let's do that. Come on. Come on, family, wherever you may be. 
you celebrate the goodness of the Lord with us and the great things that he's about to do in our midst in this coming year. Come on, sing together. Come on. Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at his feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You freed. faithful you are good and no matter what happens your word and your promises stay the same we worship you our faithful God
God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant, your faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven, you'll do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness. To me, from the rising sun to the setting same, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Your history can prove there's nothing you can do, you're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. And let my heart burn when you speak a word, it will come to
change, you never change. Oh. Through the seasons, through the seasons, you remain the same. And so we bless you. Forever. 
am healed with one touch i am made whole you have spoken and i know that it is so in the storm you are peace and your love won't let me go you have spoken and I know that it is so. You have spoken, and I know that it is so. You have spoken, and I know that it is so.
seated in the highest place, the unshakable King. Nations rise and nations fall. You're unfailing through it all. All creations rise and sing to the unshakable King. Father, that's how we want to approach the new year. A confidence and a trust in a king who is unshakable, who leads an unshakable kingdom. We had challenges in the last year, but I thank you that we can start this year looking up to you, trusting, believing, God, that indeed, Nothing is impossible to our King, our Lord, and our God. I thank you, Lord, that we can start this year afresh. Start this year looking up to you, believing that nothing is impossible to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for drawing us to you. Thank you for bringing us before the Father. Thank you so much. And so many of you may have been, you may have, 2020 may have been a challenging year for for a lot of us, a lot of you. But I thank you that we can always look up ahead and say, Lord, 2021 will be different. Different in the sense that we can put our trust in a living God. For those of you who have been affected heavily by 2020 or by what happened in 2020, I want you to cheer up. Do not be faint-hearted. Do not be weary. We have a God who is able to lift us up in the midst of all these things. Let me just pray for you. Father, thank you so much that we can look up to an unshakable king. We can look up to a kingdom that will never be shaken no matter what happens. No matter what happens in the economy of the world, no matter what happens around us, we can always look up to you and know that you hold our future. You hold this year. We love you. We want to know you. We want to follow you. We want to obey you more than ever before, no matter what. Because you hold this year in the very palm of your hands. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you that we can trust in you. In Jesus' most precious name. Amen and amen. Well, join me as I thank our team for leading us in a time of worship. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, give them a round of applause, okay? Thank you so much, okay? Farry and the team, great job, everybody. Thank you. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's a wonderful time that we can be together. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us. And again, I don't know about you, but just worshiping the Lord during that time assures me that something great is going to happen in 2021. I'm just reminded about this verse as well, okay? In Hebrews chapter 12, and you can turn to that Hebrews 12. It says here, Therefore, let us be grateful. For receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Let me say that again. Let us be grateful. Let us be thankful that we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. No matter what's happening around us, it will not be shaken, okay? And therefore, because we have a kingdom that can never be shaken, let us offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. That's what the writer of the book of Hebrews is saying, okay? Indeed, as Farry and the rest of our team led us when they were leading us at time of worship, that was emphasized. We have an unshakable king and an unshakable kingdom, okay? And because of that, let us offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and with awe. Now, whether that be our lives, whether that be our service, whether that be our worship unto Him, whether that be our offerings, okay? Everything that we have, give it to God. As a sign of reverence, as a sign of awe, as a sign of respect, as a sign of appreciation, 
as a sign of thanksgiving. Every time we give what rightly belongs to God, He is honored, He is pleased, and He is worshipped. So for those of you who in the past year, 2020, you have been challenged, you've been, you know, some of you probably lost your jobs, you got some massive pay cuts, you have bills to pay, but still, you decided, I will worship the Lord with everything I've got. I will please Him. And so give what rightly belongs to God. For those of you who still do not know where to drop your offerings, talk to your life group leaders and they will guide you. They will be there to help you and, and assist you how you can drop that. Thank you for being faithful. Let me just pray for those of you who have been regularly and faithfully giving your tithes and offering. And for those of you who have been challenged with that, listen, look up to God because He's able to provide for you above and beyond. Father, thank you so much for granting us what we need, not just in 2020, but as we go forward in 2021, we are confident and we are assured that you have gone before us and that your provision will always be there. Thank you, Lord. So that we might be able to do your will, we know that you will provide for us. Thank you that in the process of you providing for us, we get to enjoy your blessings. We realize that we are blessed above and beyond so that we can continuously be a blessing unto others. So, Father, thank you so much for providing above and beyond. I ask now that you would bless each and every cheerful giver, even those who are having some difficulties right now. Would you provide for them? Would you show them nothing is impossible to you? We ask this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen and amen. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. And I am joined together by all these folks with me right now. Thank you. Woo! All right. Okay. <laughs> Happy New Year to everybody. Okay. This is truly great. Okay. Now, having said that, okay, the new year, the new year means, okay, many of you have been uh, following us, have been joining us, our community, Victory Dubai. You know that every month we start off, well, most of the time we start off with a new series. And this new year is no different from the past, okay? We have a new series, okay, but not just a new series here in the UAE. We actually have a new series for the entire every nation family around the world, okay? And we are excited about that. You know what the title is? This is the title, Awesome God. Everyone say awesome. 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 Okay, wow. Okay, that's, that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> An awesome God. That's the title of our series, and we would be doing this for probably the next six or seven weeks, and we are just excited because as we step into the new year, uh, yes, there are a lot of things that can happen, a lot of things that happened last year, and we know that a lot of things will still happen this year, but we are confident that nothing is impossible before God. Oh, by the way, awesome God, that's also the theme of this year's week of prayer, fasting, and consecrated, consecration that will be starting on January 11 to 15. If you do not have the materials yet, make sure that you get them from your life group leaders. They're available in our FB page. You will be able to see that. Download that so that you can join us in our time of prayer, fasting, and really just seeking the face of God beginning this year. That's one of our highlights for in every year. Every year we start, we want to come before the Lord and say, God, we trust in you. Even even though we do not know what 2021 or what this new year would actually begin. Okay, now before we actually totally leave uh, the previous year, okay, before we do that, I saw this, I saw the cover page of Time Magazine International Digital Edition and uh, that was actually, uh, that came out last December 14. And it called, okay, 2020 the worst year ever. All right, the worst year ever. Now, I, I don't know about you, okay? Uh, in, in everything, it's a matter of perspective, okay? Now, I will not, you know, I will not diminish the fact that it was a tough year. We started, uh, in fact, 2019, right before the end of 2019, a lot of things have already happened. The pandemic is just, the global pandemic due to COVID-19 was only one of the things that happened to us. But there were a lot of things that happened uh, around the world, and it was tough. 
it was difficult. And to all of us, we have been affected, we have been impacted by the things that happened in 2020. Now, as we look forward in 2021, we always ask ourselves, what, what does 2021 have in store for us, okay? Um, last month, I remember Pastor Peter actually uh, asked us uh, to describe 2020 with one word, okay? And there were many answers. You, those of you who've been uh, subscribing, those of you who subscribed, and those of you who are following us, you've actually given a lot of descriptive words regarding 2020. But there was one word that actually, that, that, that stuck at the back of my mind. And I realized to me personally, that's how I would like to describe 2020. And that's the word change. Okay. Now, again, depending on what happened to you last 2020, it may be negative or it may be positive. Okay. Uh, positive in the sense that I know uh, some single folks got married last year. Woo! Congratulations, okay, all right. Some folks got married last year, okay? So I think that was a good opportunity, okay? You don't have to spend too much, okay? <laughs> you don't have to spend too much, okay? So not you don't have to invite them. You, you, you won't offend too many people because you won't be able to invite them. You know what? It's COVID, so I'm sorry. Can I? And so people were able to save a lot, and so they did that. So again, it's a matter of perspective. So when you think about 2020, okay, Time Magazine says the worst year ever. To some people, it's not. It's probably the best year ever. But whatever it is, whether it be negative or a positive connotation, to many, 2020 was really a challenging year. A lot of things actually a lot of things change. In fact, somebody said that it's an awful year, okay? 2020 was an awful year, but listen to this. Even though we saw the awfulness of 2020, still it will not deny, despite what happened, we cannot deny the fact that we still have an awesome God. Amen? Amen. That we still have an awesome God. And that's why, that's why we'd like to celebrate the awesome God that we serve, that we love, that we follow in the next few weeks. We will be talking about that, okay? Okay. Um, now, we're stepping into a new year, 2021, okay? Uh, and, 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 you know, just watching this, my wife and I, Febs and I, just got back uh, a few weeks ago from the Philippines. And even in the Philippines where people celebrate, you know, as early as September, they celebrate Christmas, okay, and celebrate New Year and all of those things. There was this missing uh, enthusiasm. There was this missing excitement. And again, Natural speaking, because, uh, because of what was happening, what was going on. Uh, but what was, you know, probably it's because of the uncertainty of 2021. I've always said that people fear the unknown. Uh, but then I've realized this, not really. People do not actually fear the unknown. Because if you would really just close your eyes and think about things, uh, things that you do not know, it doesn't bother you so much. What really bothers us are the effect, the result, and the changes that will happen, the unknown changes that will happen to us as we come into something unfamiliar, okay? So, as we step into 2021, we're not sure what's going to happen. But more than that, we are not sure about the changes that will impact us, that will impact our families, that will impact our career, that will impact our, our, our future, our plans, you know, whatever we've laid down. We're a little bit anxious about that, okay? Because of the unexpected things that can happen. But despite that, let me challenge you with this. The Bible has an answer for all those anxieties, for all those unexpected things that can happen, all those things that you are unsure of, like 2021. The Bible has an answer. And you know what? This is the Bible's, the Bible's answer. The unchangeable God. And that is the title of my message, okay? This is the Bible's answer. So when everything else is changing, we do have an unchangeable God. The God who never changes. The unchanging God, okay? Theologians would call this the doctrine of the immutability of God, okay? That means He doesn't change. 
There's nothing in him in the past or in the future that needs to change or will ever change. And you know what? If I am going to be confident about the unknown 2021, I would rather look up to an unchangeable God, an unchanging God, because I know I will be sure in his presence. And that's what we want to talk about, the unchangeable God. Now, we will be looking at the book of Psalms, okay? When you say book of Psalms, that's, uh, the Jews call them the book of prayers. And we would like to look particularly at Psalms 102, okay? Now, we do not know the writer of Psalms 102, okay? But uh, this is a prayer of an unknown writer feeling overwhelmed, by a sense of loss, a sense of shame, if you might say. So whatever the cause may be. Now, historians would say this was probably during the time of exile when people, and the reason we, we have an idea, because in the previous verses, there was a reference to the restoration of Zion. And that was always a theme when uh, the nation of Israel was actually in exile, okay, whether it be in Babylon or uh, uh, whether it be in uh, because of the, you know, they were taken by the Persian Empire. So there was a sense of loss, whether it be the identity, whether it be their properties, whether it be uh, everything else that they have as a nation. Uh, and because of that, because of the sense of loss, okay, uh, there's also a sense of shame, Okay, have anybody here felt a sense of loss and a sense of shame? Okay, uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but I know certain people who've lost their jobs despite many years that they were, uh, they were working in a particular company and uh, they've lost their job and um, it was not their fault. It's just that it, it was a season. It was a time that that, that, that just happened. Uh, but nonetheless, there is not only a sense of loss, I think a bigger thing is a sense of shame. Gosh, you know. And the, se- the feeling of that they might have to go home despite many years being here in the country. Uh, some of them, because they never really wanted the, that loss, they felt even a sense of rejection. And it's all brought about by the tragedy that they were, uh, that, well, that we are facing. Very similar to uh, this writer of the book of Psalms 102. A sense of loss, shame, rejection. In fact, if you go to the previous verses, I mean to the earlier part of Psalms 102, you can, you can see that. But because of the lack of time, let's just look at verse 25 onwards up to the end of this chapter. So Psalms 102, please follow along with me. I'm going to read from the ESV. It says here, Of old, okay, or in other translation, it says, in the beginning, okay, of old you laid the foundation of the earth. Now, I want you to, as we read this, I want you to uh, bear in mind what uh, the word change, okay, because, um, again, what we are uncertain of in 2021 uh, is not really the unknown, but really the changes that will happen to us and that will affect us. As we step into the, as we traverse 2021 or traverse this new year. So here comes the writer of Psalms 102. Once again, elevating the fact that everything is wonderful, everything is great. So he talked about the foundation. He said, in the beginning, you laid the foundation of the earth, referring to God. He said, the heavens are the work of your hands, okay? Okay. Now, for those of you here, how many of you have been around the UAE during the schooler season? Okay, I hope you're enjoying camping, you know, uh, driving around, you know, maximize since we still have about three more months. Do that, okay? So, if you've never been out, those of you watching, if you've never been out of the UAE, UAE has a lot to offer to you, particularly during this time of the year. Go ahead, go around, and I want you to enjoy the beauty of nature. I want you to enjoy the beauty of God's creation, okay? Even at night, you just go out in the middle of the desert and look up, and you would see the wonderful stars and everything, you know, the beauty of the sky. All of those have been laid out by God. Yet as wonderful and as majestic as all of God's creation, let me tell you this. They will all change one day. They will all change. 
You see, everything that we, everything around us, the landscape, you know, geography, topography, and all those things, when uh, many, many years, they're not like that. But due to certain factors that may be uh, caused by humanity, by us, uh, uh, you know, by us, or maybe just, you know, it just happened by certain factors beyond our control, things change. Even the stars, you know, scientists would say that there is such a thing as the death of a star or the birth of a star. In other words, everything will change. In fact, he said this, if you, the next verse says, they will perish, okay? They will wear out like a garment, all right? Now, I know we, you know, sometimes we have this favorite, you know, clothes, favorite shirt that we like to wear in and out. You know, it's a wash and wear shirt, okay? Uh, you wear it, wash it, wear it, wash it, you know, until that hole becomes so evident. And that's the only time you'll change that, okay? I know that because I do that, all right? But anyway, like old garments, everything else will wear out. Everything, though, everything before us can perish. Everything before us can actually vanish. Everything before us can be destroyed. In other words, everything before us can change. Amen? And so this brings us to the first truth that we'd like to look, uh, we'd like to study, we'd like to embrace uh, from this verse or verses that we've actually read. And this is it. That change is inescapable. Wherever you go, wherever you run, anywhere in the planet or even beyond the planet, change is inescapable. Somebody said it's inevitable. It's a constant reality. In fact, while we were, while Fairy was leading us in, a, uh, in our worship, she, you know, we sang a song that says constant. We mentioned that word constant. And there are two things that are constant in life. One is change. And the other is the unchangeable God. Let me say that again. There are only two things that are constant in life. Change and the unchangeable God. It's a constant reality. It's happening every day, every single day. You wake up and you realize uh, you're twice the man you used to be. <laughs> Especially it's Christmas time, all right? Get ready with that. Despite the lockdown and despite, you know, probably the restrictions of gathering as much, you can be at home, you know, home cooked meals and all those things. Enjoy that, all right? We wake up every single day changed. We go to bed and, you know, some changes that happen. Some of the changes are the results of our own doing, some of the changes are beyond our control. But everything, let me say this, change is inevitable, change is inescapable. In the year 2020, there were a lot of things that changed. Um, you probably can agree, this, uh, agree with me on this. Some people lost their jobs, okay? Or there may have been a reassignment of jobs. Uh, part of that probably is moving to another place because of that job. Then you have finances. Uh, sometimes because of the massive pay cut, major loss of your finances that affected your not only your savings right now, sometimes even your investment, affected even the studies of the children, affected even the payment for uh, your utilities, even the payment of your flat or your villa, which led you to a downgrade or take on a smaller space just so that you can make both ends meet. Those are changes. Right? Plans, future plans, current and future plans. Okay, you had plans by the end of the year to travel back home or go somewhere else, uh, spend Christmas, but all of these things began to change. You were affected. No one was spared, okay? No industry was spared because of the global pandemic. And then you have relationships. There's the loss of loved ones. And uh, again, this hit me because after coming back from, you know, the Philippines, Fevs and I, we had the opportunity to visit my parents, and, you know, it would really dawn on you that you wanted to spend time with your family, with your, you know, if they're still alive, spend time with them. Because change can happen just like that. Just like that. We have our very own people here in Dubai who have experienced 
uh, this changes the loss of people and it's difficult, it's tough. It's, it's only by the grace of God that they are actually sustaining themselves, amen? And so many things else, so many things, so many changes in 2020. But you know what? This is an amazing thing. You and I, okay, all of us, okay, all of us, and that's the same thing with you. You and I are survivors of 2020. Yes, come on. You and I are survivors of 2020, okay? And, and so we survived 2020. 2021 would be not different, okay? Even though we do not know what 2021 would bring. But just as the Lord allowed us to go through 2020 with all the difficulties and all the challenges, we know God is able to sustain us. So change may be inescapable, okay? Change may be inescapable, but understand this. A lot of things can happen and we can still trust the living God, okay? Now, because change in, is inescapable, look at this. I want you to welcome the realities of change, because it's going to happen, it's inevitable, it's a constant reality. The best thing we can do is, rather than fight it, welcome it. Okay. Now, of course, do your very best not to cause a negative change. But even though things happen to you because of certain factors, welcome them, embrace them, because they're about to come. And as you welcome the realities of change, hold on to what does not change, okay? Because everything else would change. Everything else would have some kind of changes in them. Welcome them, but at the same time realize this. They're here today. They may be gone tomorrow. They're exactly how you see them today or how you have received them today. But a few more weeks, a few more days, a few more months, they may be different. Now, that could be your job, that could be your finances, that could be your health, okay? That could be the people around you. These are realities of life. Change is inescapable, so welcome them. Embrace them. Do not be offended. Do not be mad when change begins to happen. Embrace them. Welcome them. But as you do that, understand this. If there's anything you want to hold on to this new year and in the years to come, hold on to that which does not change. Or let me say this, to that who does not change. Amen? That's what verse 26 says this, okay? I'll, I will complete the verse. He says, everything else, they will perish. Foundations of the earth, the stars above us, all everything else, they will all change. So everything in between, the top, you know, from the foundations of the earth to the heavens above, and everything in between, everything else will change. But look at what the psalmist said. They will perish, they will vanish, they will be destroyed, they will disappear, they will change, but you will remain <laughs> like that, okay? And the psalmist was referring to God himself. You will remain. Everything else will wear out like a garment. You will change them like a robe. They will pass away. I'll comment on that later on. But you are the same. Look at somebody and say, God is the same, okay? God is the same, okay? God is the same. You know, a theological word is eternal, Eternal. He is the same. He's the same during the time of Abraham. He's the same during the time of David, during the time of the Apostle Paul, and during our time today. He is the same God. Okay? The same God. All right? Despite what the psalmist was going through, okay? He said, you're the same. Your years have known. Despite what the psalmist was going through, he acknowledged the fact, even though everything else will change, but there is someone who does not change. God will never change. He's the unchangeable God. He's eternal. Years, no matter, and, and again, <laughs> we are limited. When you talk about years, when you talk about time, you know, we are, the way we conceive that is just this much. But when you talk about God, when you talk about time to God, it's infinite. And he never changes. He's still the same God. Okay? The same God. All right? Now, I want you to look at the word remain. I, I like that word remain. Because I'm looking at the word remain, I realize the word remain means unmoved. 
And it means that he is in a standing attitude. In fact, sometimes they use the word, the word that they used in the, uh, this is our tra English translation, remain. But the Hebrew word that was used there was sometimes referred to a, a servant who's remained standing and has always the attitude of, what can I do for you? Over, always watching over us. In other words, the psalmist was basically saying everything else will perish. But we have a God who is unmoved and is always watching over us. Now, he may not be doing whatever, you know, whatever we desire him, whatever we want him to do. No, But he is always there watching over us. And will make sure that he will not only take care of us, he will not abandon us. And again, as we fulfill, as we serve the very purpose of our lives, God will be there never to leave us nor forsake us. Which leads me to the second truth. Not only is change inescapable, but this verse also tells us that God is unchanging. The unchangeable God, amen? He is unchanging. In fact, it, this just dawned on me. If He is the unchanging God... Therefore, if Abraham knew Yahweh this way, and David knew God this way, and the Apostle Paul knew God this way, same thing, David, don't this God. We can know this God in such a manner. Amen? We can know. So if you're, and, and I don't know, but this excites me a lot because I've realized this. Gosh, you know what? I, as I read the Bible, I realize these are not stories. These are relationships of men and women who are, these are stories of men and women who have a relationship with this eternal, unchanging God. Therefore, you and I can have the opportunity to actually know this God and love Him, follow Him, obey Him. Same God, unchanging. There is nothing that changes in him. He is the unchanging God. Amen. In fact, Psalms 90 said this. Uh, Before the mountains were brought forth. And ever you had formed the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting. You are God. Amen. You are God. So because God, you know, God is unchanging when it comes to his character. When it comes to his purpose and plans. When it comes to his promises. When you say character, it's about his nature. He doesn't change. So the way Abraham knew God as a provider, I want you to know this same God, he is the same God who provided for Abraham, is also the same God who will provide for you and for me, for all of us, for 2021. Because he's the same God. Amen. The same God who protected Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace is the same God who will protect you and me as we venture into the unknown of 2021. Okay? Same God. Same God. We can know this God. Amen? So, same purpose. You look at that. God desires from, from, from beginning to end. And I don't... I, we, it's hard to comprehend beginning and end, okay? But uh, with God, there is no, He is the Alpha and the Omega. There's no such thing as, uh, be, He's there from the very beginning, okay? It's hard, hard to explain, but His purposes are the same. His purposes are true. His plans are true. He would like to reveal Himself more than ever before to you and to me, okay? Uh, and then His promises, we sang that earlier. God has set His word. It shall come to pass. His promises are true. So therefore, if God promised, you know, that he will be there to Abraham, to Noah, to Moses, he promised he will never leave them. This same God, as we step into 2021, is the same God who promised he will never leave us, nor forsake us. The same God, okay? The unchanging God. Wow. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm excited. That gives me a lot of confidence that even though I do not understand, nor comprehend, no, I have no idea what 2021 would bring. But I am confident that because God is unchanging, I can hold his righteous right hand Listen to him, know him, follow him, and he will guide me, direct me. Just as he guided, directed the people of old, he will do the same thing. And not just to me, but even to the generations after us. Amen? Now, so, so in, in fact, in, in some of the changes, sometimes we get offended because there are changes. Let me, you know, shift a little bit here. Sometimes when there are changes, it affects us, and sometimes we are offended by that. I don't know if you know this, but God 
at times actually brings about change. Not just at times, always. He brings about change. And you can see that again in verse 26. He said, you will change them like a robe. Talking about the foundations of the earth. Maybe even the star, you know, the, you know, the starry host. He, God can change them like a robe. So if it's old, he changes that. And they will pass away. So at times, God will bring about change. And we may not be able to understand that. But whenever God brings about the change, he brings them so that he can align us and the world to his very nature, very character, very purpose, and his promises. And so, even though it seems like painful, the changes that are happening are painful, and you know what, it brings about a change on the inside. If you will welcome the change and hold on to that, to who, whom, who is unchangeable, you would allow the changes to happen in your life. You would find yourselves being aligned to the plans, the purposes, the character of God, becoming more like Jesus, and seeing the promises of God happening in your life see life is not about what we want okay the future is not about our plans the future is about God's plan okay it's about his plans about his purposes our job is to know him follow him and please him in every possible way in whatever sphere whatever aspect wherever he called us to do so God brings about change to align us. Now, because God is unchanging, okay, this is my challenge for you. Know Him so that you can confidently trust and follow Him when changes come. Let me say that again. Because God is unchanging, get to know Him. Okay, when, when things around you begin to change, we may not have an explanation. But look up to God because He is unchanging and His purposes are the same. Amen. So decades, generations shall come. Okay, people shall come, our children shall come. And they, they may not understand the changes that are happening, but understand if you look up to an unchangeable God, an unchanging God, an immutable God, you can be confident to traverse that year or that era or that generation because you know that God will never change. Amen? So I want to challenge you with this, okay? So that we can have this wonderful relationship with God. Again, set your hearts to know Him today, okay? The beginning of the year. You know what you can do? Grab a hold of a Bible reading plan. Go ahead and do that. Get that and so that you can actually, you know, read the Bible and then through the Bible you can know Him. Uh, if there's any desire, any goal that you have, any New Year's resolution that you have for this year, okay? Make sure that you read the Bible through and through and get to know God so that you can follow Him and love Him. Because He is the unchangeable God. All right? Um, commit to that. Allow Him to speak to you through His Word. Because there's nothing greater than that. There's nothing more assuring than knowing that God holds our future. Now, just to cap this off, verse 28, and I like verse 28 as well, because even though we know who God is, we get to know who God is, and trust Him and be confident in Him, it doesn't just stop there. When you look back, you know that there's a generation coming after you. And that's why the psalmist said this, The children of your servants shall dwell secure, okay? Their offspring shall be established before you. In other words, our children, and uh, you know, we have here uh, everybody else, okay, except you, bro, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we got our children, we got people around us, we know that we have a generation after us. But it says here, the next generation shall be founded on God. Our job is to make sure that as we get to know this God, as we get to love this God, make sure that we pass that on to the generation after us. I'm reminded about Deuteronomy chapter 6. Pastor Peter and, and Jason preached on this when he said, we make sure that these words which uh, God commanded us today shall be in our hearts and we shall teach them diligently to our children when we talk about them, when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise. Make sure that that is communicated, lived out, and passed on to the generation after that. And that's what we like about discipleship, okay? As we disciple our children at home or in schools, in the campuses, they will know God and they will trust this God and they will face the uncertain future with such certainty because they have an unchangeable God. 
Amen. I think that's one of the best things that we can give to them. You know, again, we've realized this. Education can change. You can bring them to the most expensive university, but when a pandemic like what happened to us, again, everything begins to shut down, and they end up going to school like everybody else. I mean, home at home. But see, it's not about that. I think the best thing that we can give our children and the next generation. Now, when I say our children, it could be our very own biological children or men and women that you begin to father or mother spiritually as you lead them to the Lord. The best thing that we can give to them is an understanding of an unchangeable God. Amen. Prepare the next generation. Make sure that they will know, they, will, they, uh, they know and they experienced and they have experienced and they really understand this unchangeable God, okay? Because the generations to come shall find security. Let me say that again. Our, the generations to come will find security, not in a changing world, but in an unchangeable God. Amen. That's what we want to do. We want to make sure our children and the next generation, the next generation of followers of Jesus Christ will look up to an unchangeable God in a constantly changing world. As I close this, I'm reminded about who Jesus really is. We would not have, we cannot understand this unchangeable God if we have not known the exact his exact representation and that is Jesus himself in fact if you would move further to hebrews chapter 1 i realize this the writer of the book of hebrews okay was referring to jesus when he quoted psalms 102 verse 25 28 what we've read earlier he says, and you, Lord, now, if you read the prior verses, he was talking about the Son. He was talking about Jesus Christ. He says, and you, Lord, lay the foundation. Exactly what was in Psalms 102. The writer of the book of Psalms, or the psalmist, was referring to Yahweh. But the writer of the book of Hebrews is now applying the same verse to Jesus Christ. And he says, you laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning. And the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish. But Jesus, you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment, like a robe you roll, will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed. But Jesus, you are the same. And your years will have no end. A few chapters after that, Hebrews 13 verse 8 says this. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this same Jesus, the unchangeable God, revealed to us that despite the many things that are happening around us, despite even the effect of sin over humanity, despite the impact worse than a global pandemic, sin is more catastrophic when you compare that with global pandemic. With COVID-19. COVID-19, it's nothing when, it, when you compare that to the effect and the impact and the destruction brought about by sin. But like anything else, the effect of sin has been taken care of. Jesus, the unchangeable God, he came, incarnate God, came with a, you know, he walked with us, dined with us. He walked with the disciples and then after 33 years, died on the cross, gave himself up so that you and I would no longer have to be bound by the impact and the effect of sin, but instead be victorious over that. And just as maybe sin have, impacted and changed the world understand this the hope of the world is this unchangeable god and jesus himself is the exact representation of this unchangeable god amen so i, I want to challenge you with this as we move forward listen to this for 2021 our hope 
And our assurance is in this unchangeable Jesus. Unchangeable Jesus. Now you may be you may be struggling with so many things about maybe, you know, I don't know this Jesus. You know, I'm worse than what happened to the loss of my job or the loss of my finances. I find myself struggling on the inside. The things I want to do, I don't do them. And then I don't want to commit sin. I don't want to do the wrong things because every time I do them, I realize it's wrong. And I can sense that. Listen to this. Jesus, the unchangeable Jesus, died on the cross for our sins. You can trust Him. And you can ask Him to touch you and to change you right now, to save you right now, and to lead you right now, so that in 2021, your trust is never on yourself nor on circumstances. Your trust is in the unchangeable Jesus. You can follow a prayer like this. You can follow with me and say, Lord Jesus, thank you that you are the unchangeable God. I thank you that even though things are changing around me, I can trust in you. Forgive me for trusting in myself. I realize it's the effect of sin in me. And I cannot do anything. I cannot change that. But it's changing me. But I want to come to you right now because I've realized you died on the cross for my sins so that I will be changed, so that I will be like you, so that I will be conformed to your image. I want to trust you right now. I believe in you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for giving me eternal life. Thank you for restoring me back to the Father. Thank you. If you pray the similar prayer like that, I believe things are going to be different in your life. Yes, there are change, but there will be changes for the better. I want to challenge you with this, okay? We have a QR code that you can scan. It's probably in front of your screen, maybe down here, maybe on the right, maybe on the left, but you have a QR code right now. Scan that. If you actually prayed a prayer or you said, you know what, I want to know more about Jesus, I want to know more about this unchangeable Jesus. I want to know how I can traverse 2021 with such a confidence that you are talking about Pastor Well. Scan the QR code, okay? Scan that, and somebody will get a hold of you and will walk with you and will talk to you and will pray with you because we are excited about that. Some of you, maybe you need some prayers. Again, scan that same code, okay? Again, somebody will call you and pray with you. Or maybe you just need some information, scan that QR code, okay? And we will keep that there. And in fact, we will also post that in our FB page, Victory by Facebook page, so that you can also scan that and then you can send us some, uh, you know, if you have some question, make sure you do that. And uh, our leaders will be getting a hold of you. It's amazing how we can be confident despite a lot of the changing things around. I want to pray for all of you. For those of you who committed themselves to Jesus, you're on your way to a great journey. For those of you who may be uncertain of what 2021 will bring, I will guarantee with this. Let me tell you this. I am uncertain. I am unsure of what 2021 will bring. I am unsure of what January 2021 will bring. But one thing that I am confident about, despite all those things that can and will change right before me has gone before us is the unchangeable God and I would like to, I will just know him and follow him and my confidence is not in what's going around me my confidence is in the unchanging God who is before me know him love him and follow him he's able to do above and beyond ask or imagine. With that, I'd like to end this uh, this afternoon. It's been great, guys, okay? We have a thousand people, okay? <laughs> a thousand, probably a thousand angels with us right now, but it's been a great afternoon. It's a great start. I'm excited about this. This is the first day of 2021, and I'm glad that you are here. I'm glad you're tuning in, okay? And I'm glad that you are confident that we serve an unchanging God. Amen. So we are, we are sure. We are sure about God. We're not sure about what's going to happen. But we are sure that God 
is faithful. We are sure that God is true to His Word. Amen? And we are sure that He is the unchanging God. Lord, bless each one of us as we go our different ways. Thank you that we can embrace the reality. Yes, there are changes and they are inescapable. But the other fact is this, that we also have an unchanging God who is with us, never to leave us, nor forsake us. Thank you so much, God, as we move forward to 2021. Help us to follow you, the unchanging God. No matter what changes around us, you will never change. In Jesus' most precious name, amen and amen. Thank you so much. God bless you, everybody. Bye.